So good morning, Peter. Um, you're going to be interviewed about the benefits and the inf of inflammation and its consequences. So I think the first question which arises from this topic is why is inflammation beneficial to the body? Well, I've been taking care of patients my whole career that are the most ill patients in intensive care and also in surgery. And I've always wondered um, what purpose was, was served by the symptoms that these patients exhibited, like fever, um, pain, and edema. Um, and then it appeared that already 200 years, a little bit less, after the, the birth of Christ, um, Celsus has described these symptoms in wound healing. And he already at that time considered this, these symptoms, pain, swelling, fever, uh, as beneficial. Uh, so my intuitive feeling at that moment was during my career, I'm now since seven, year, seven years unfortunately retired, that our, because our genome has survived and shaped in the course of a million years at least of evolution, uh, it, it must some, serve some purpose. It must be useful to the, to the organism. But I didn't have time to, to support that there's a lot of data, so now I can do that. And it turns out that if you kill these symptoms, fever, pain, and so forth, you may do a lot of harm. So in effect, that proves that the inflammatory response is useful. And uh, so killing it, for instance, in children who have varicella by giving NSAIDs, uh, increases uh, the risk of developing deep varicella infections. Giving a lot of NSAIDs to patients who have undergone surgery in which you have made intestinal anastomosis uh, increases the risk that these anastomoses break down. So there are many, many and many more, just uh, we don't have time to extensively describe all these untoward effects of, inflammatory, of uh, NSAIDs, of killing the inflammatory response, but it becomes clearer and clearer that if we try to inhibit it, we only inhibit the symptoms, but we inhibit also this useful, beneficial inflammatory proce process, so that will be of harm to the patient and to everybody. In fact, I think that NSAIDs should be taken off the market, should not be freely available, and should only be used in, in situations where you must in some way uh, treat pain or, and then it should be prescribed by the medical profession, uh, professionals and not just be freely available. So, <clears throat> if I get you right, the consequences of, of inflammation is what I would refer to the repair process. Or do you, is your view of the consequences of inflammation even broader? Well, it's not only the repair process, it's also the primary uh, inflammatory uh, stage which, which is killed by it, I think. But certainly also the repair pr process. We must also realize that in every situation where there is growth, there are inflammatory uh, symptoms occurring. For instance, a pregnant woman has signs of inflammation, her TNF uh, is up, uh, all the, cyt the whole cytokine cascade in a, at low speed is upregulated similarly as is inflammation. And it is because the inflammatory process is required for growth and for, uh, for proliferation of cells. But aren't there also anti-inflammatory uh, regulations also in place which keeping the inflammatory response in check? Well, I think 
you are the one to answer this question. <laughs> no, I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, and, uh, recently there is, the resolvents have been, uh, been found, uh, the kind of cytokines, who, who try to keep this process in check. Obviously, everything we do is much more complicated than, uh, than we think and than our limited human minds can grasp. So, uh, but indeed, you must in some way have this pro-inflammatory process, it, it starts the process, but that it has to be kept in check. And that is some of the things that now recently have been, fi been found and explored. And I, I'm, I'm very curious, but I'm wondering whether if you give them, the, whether that will be of benefit, because the body is not stupid and uh, it, it really behaves very well. Not always, obviously, obviously there are genetic situations, there are malnourished situations who screw up this, this, these reactions so that they cannot be developed at their full extent, the extent to which it is necessary for healing. But in principle, I think that our, the, the arrangements that have been developed over all those years and that have allowed us to survive, to, to allow the human, uh, the human genome to survive, uh, must, must be okay, must be. Uh, and, and therefore, if you uh, start to inhibit downstream somewhere, you may kill patients or you may do harm to them. If you want to, to, to change something, you should change it at the very beginning. Okay. So, yes. you're already alluding how the inflammatory response and the nutrition is interacting. And one view, and for, view of a view is that the insulin re, uh, resistance in patients has something to do with the inflammatory response and, and the nutritional state. Yeah. And can you just give us your point of view on, on this um, uh, insulin resistance in patients? Well, I like to talk about this for hours. But <laughs> and I will not, and it's, it's difficult to keep myself in check, <laughs> to, to limit what I'm going to, talk, uh, to say about it. Any inflammatory condition, so any healing condition, is accompanied by uh, insulin resistance. But like I mentioned, Gross already is an inflammatory condition in where you have mild symptoms of inflammation and it goes together with uh, insulin resistance. And examples are simple. It, it happens in any starving per, a person, but that is, that's for another reason. But it happens in any si life event situation. So in trauma, illness, but also in, uh, in gross, meaning uh, pregnancy, uh, lactation, uh, all, in all these conditions people are insulin resistant. And now there is one, and the problem with, with our medical profession and with the scientists is that we all have to be so specialized uh, to, uh, to do well in research that we have become very narrow in the area where we are specialized and it becomes very difficult to overview uh, the whole area. Uh, so people who are in, let's say, in the anthracite, in the gut, inter interested in the anthracite, do not know anything about pregnancy or other situations, uh, in other type of life events like migration, like uh, hibernation and so forth. So overviewing and have a holistic view of what happens is uh, difficult to achieve. But in view of the fact in any condition where there is growing you, uh, or where you prepare for hibernation or estivation and during those conditions the body is insulin resistant. So the insulin resistance that we see in type 2 diabetes mellitus uh, must also be adaptive and is something that you cannot do without. So upregulating insulin sensitivity, that's the consequence from this view on insulin resistance, upregulating insulin sensitivity may be harmful to the patient. Uh, again, I think you should, if you treat these patients, you should start at the beginning. And the beginning of all this is that people are obese, and as a consequence, they have pro-inflammatory activity, and as a consequence, they have insulin resistance, so that you may 
have to treat your obesity rather than anything else. And if you want to treat them because they already have uh, type 2 diabetes, then you should rather give, in my, uh, I'm not an endocrinologist, I have never treated di diabetic patients, but you should give insulin rather, because that is a more logic thing to do, rather than, uh, than try to upregulate sensitivity of, uh, in for insulin, because that has been shown to be deleterious. There are uh, sensitizers to, to, for insulin action that have uh, uh, very bad effects on the heart, for instance, and there are many other com complications due to these treatments. So uh, this view has consequences for treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, but in principle, I think the insulin resistance that is there is just as uh, adaptive as in the pregnant woman who uh, has a a fetus growing inside her and a placenta which is uh, growing inside her. You refer to um, insulin resistance just in the chronic inflammatory field, which is, but you, if you consider diabetes as some slow, slow chronic, low-grade inflammation, but what is the, the idea behind insulin resistance in severe trauma and severe infection? Why is there also insulin resistance? Well, it's, it's, in my view, it's simple. When we were traumatized, uh, in fact, we live in the last seconds of the 24 hours of the existence of mankind. But all those other seconds of that 24 hours, we did not have access to food. So we were starving. To survive trauma, trauma has an effect of three months. In the beginning, it's very severe, and slowly it gets less and less. And during those three months, animals, but also humans, often could not eat a lot. So they had, in some way, to do, to, to build their response, to heal, with something they had already inside them. And what we have ab abundantly is muscle. And muscle is the supplier of building blocks that allows the body to react to this trauma. So, and the more of this muscle you lose, the, the less uh, long you live, because your muscle and your protein inside the body is the limiting factor in long-term survival, provided you have enough uh, adipose tissue on board, and we generally have. So, and to spare this protein, you must not use too much glucose. And why is that? Because the only source of glucose, uh, and glucose is necessary, for our immune response and for building tissues is protein. So protein delivers carbon skeletons that produce glucose. So to limit glucose use and to only use it for these survival purposes, you must not oxidize it. And that's what we do all day here because we have, have access to food. But if you don't have access to food, then you must limit your glucose oxidation. And that is what the body does. And how does it do that? It does that by becoming insulin resistant. So insulin resistance is just as well an adaptive phenomenon as the inflammatory response. In fact, it is part of the inflammatory response. I have just one question further. So how is the nutritional state of a given person interacting with the inflammatory response? So there is, is, it is a difference. We know all that from a clinical, clinical point of view. If someone is starved when he undergoes an operation, or if he is well nourished if he undergoes an operation, or even if he is obese when he undergoes an operation, how does the nutritional state is interacting with the inflammatory response? Well, there are several aspects to that. If you don't have, let, 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 let us put it in simple phrases. If you don't have a lot of muscle around, you cannot supply this building block. So if you are depleted, it's not only muscle, but you have probably also not enough uh, micronutrients, vitamins on board, and so forth and so on. You cannot generate the response which is necessary. We sometimes see it in intensive care, that there is a hypodynamic response the patients are so ill that they cannot generate a response. They don't develop fever, 
and they do have no leukocytosis, they have, have in fact, neutropenia, and they are more ill than the patient, they, and they are more likely to die than the patients that have uh, fever and leukocytosis and so forth. I'm happy when I see cachectic patients or very depleted malnourished patients have fever because it means at least they can generate a response. So you should see fever as a successful effort to try to heal. So there is indeed enormous, and there's many more interferences with the nutritional state and, and for instance when you are already challenged in some way it is difficult, we call it the second hit, hit phenomenon, it's difficult to generate an additional response, a renewed response. So when you are already in an inflammatory state, you will not react so well to operative trauma, for instance, as, um, as and you know better than I am, but that is because you are at a certain stage of these different uh, uh, cytokine responses, the ones that are pro-inflammatory, the, the ones that resolve the, the inflammation. Uh, so the, these are all consequences of this view.